Hello once again. Today we are going to be looking at an exciting topic um, in biology. And um, before we go into that, I want to ask this little question. What kind of relationship do you think exists between a shark and a remora fish? You know, if you per time, uh, um, probably seeing a shark, um, probably in movies or probably in um, um, Nat Geo Wild and all that, you see the shark in the water, you notice that there are some fishes that go along with the shark. Now, those fishes are called the remora fish. Now, the relationship between the two of them, of course, you know the shark is a very monstrous predator and um, fishes all around are scared of coming close to the shark because there will be meals for the shark. And, but looking at the shark and the remora fish, what kind of relationship do you think exists between them? Is it a beneficial relationship? Is it a neutral relationship? Or is it a harmful relationship? Now, there, in, in, in biology, there are what we call associations or relationship. Just the same way you have an association with your friend in school, your colleague at, in, in your different workplace, and so other places, even in your own home, you have a kind of relationship. And some of this relationship can be um, beneficial to you. Um, some of this relationship, they are harmful. And some of this relationship, they are neutral, okay? And we're gonna be looking at what we mean by a beneficial relationship. We're also going to be looking at what we call a neutral relationship. We're also going to be looking at what we call a harmful relationship. So what we're primarily looking at is biological relationship or association. And it occurs between organisms. It can be organisms of the same species. It can be organisms of different species. So we're looking at all, cutting across all angles. Now, in terms of the remora fish and the shark, like I said before, the shark is a great predator of which all um, aquatic organisms run away from at the sight of the shark. But this remora fish, as small as it is, is still cleave very close. In fact, cleave to the body of the shark. Now, for me, I would say that the type of um, um, relationship they, they have between them is neutral. We're going to be looking at why it is called a neutral relationship. So the topic, once again, is biological association one. Now, in this topic, we're going to be looking at several objectives. Now, one of the objectives is that by the end of this topic, you should be able to define biological association. Number two, you should be able to mention the types of biological association we have. We have different types of biological association. Number three, you should be able to describe what we call symbiosis or symbiotic association. You should also be, also be able to describe the different types of commercialism, which is also another type of biolog biological association or relationship. So if you are set, let's look at each of these types of relationship or association in biology. The first one we're going to be looking at is definition. What do we mean by biological association? Now in communities, in a community of living organism, there exist different types of association. Even in your workplace, like I said, in your school, you have friends. And between you and these friends, there are some friends that are beneficial to you. There are some friends that actually they don't do anything bad to you. They don't harm you. Um, you don't even benefit anything from them. But we can call those type of relationship neutral. And there are some friends that are very harmful to you as um, a friend to you. Um, we have different types of friendship or different types of association. I'll give you another example of an association that can be seen in school. Okay, we're using the school as an example. You can have a friend of which um, 
uh, uh, probably the same class, and um, the, the person is intelligent, and um, um, you, or probably you, the person is uh, intelligent, and then you, you are financially buoyant. Probably your parents are financially buoyant. And um, probably uh, an, a, a, a kind of um, a classwork, or so let's say an assignment, or so homework, was given to both of you or to the whole class and um, he can help supply you with the answers if it probably it has to do with mathematics and in the case of him doing his own homework he tries to put you through how he, he came about the answer and then you got to know about how it was being solved and you did your own homework you have benefited from him okay and then probably since he is not financially buoyant during break you can also do the needful by buying him something uh, that's a beneficial type of relationship or association both of you are benefiting from each other but there is also some kind of association one can also find himself in still in quote using the school as a case study um, one person a student can be probably let's say we have student A and then student B now student A has money and also um, has the brains okay both intellectually is okay financially he's also okay and then the other student um, intellectually he's not okay but financially probably he's okay now once it comes to probably a, a, an assignment or a project was given and this one understands it better, understands the assignment, understands the project, knows what to do in order to get the right answer. And let's say student B doesn't have the knowledge of this. Now, between student A and B, student B can supply the answer to student A and put him through as to know what the processes were involved before getting the answer and then student B gets to know it since student B now has benefited from student A now during break time student B is financially buoyant and also student A is financially buoyant so student A doesn't need anything from student B but student B needs something from student A but in the process one uh, student A is not harmed even when student A, uh, student B is benefiting from student A. Now that type of relationship or association can be referred to as a neutral, uh, a neutral association or relationship. The same thing we also have as a harmful relationship. Now student A doesn't have, both intellectually he is not okay. Um, financially he is not okay and then student B intellectually he is okay financially he is okay and even when rendering help to student A that is not financially okay and is also not um, uh, intellectually okay at the long run um, maybe let's say student A or student B happens to write the assignment or do it for him with his own writing and then student A submitted it and the teacher now found out that student B helped student A and in the process student B was punished for helping student A. Now that is a harmful relationship. Student A benefited from student B. Student B did not benefit from student A but at the long run student B was harmed in the process of that relationship or association. Now, this also happens in everyday life, even in living organisms, other lower organisms, both plants and animals alike, it happens. And we're gonna be exploring some of these type of relationships or association. Now, let's start with the types of biological association we have. We're gonna be looking at five types of association, biological association. The first one is called symbiosis. The second is called commercialism. The third is called parasitism. And then the fourth is called predator. And the fifth is called competition. These are five different types of biological association we are going to be exploring 
today. But in the meantime, let's take a look at the first two, which has to do with symbiosis and commercialism. Symbiosis and commercialism. Starting with symbiosis. Now, what is symbiosis? Or what do we call symbiotic biological association? Now, symbiosis is a type of biological association which occur between two organisms, most times, of different species of different species in which both of them benefit from each other. Both parties, both organisms benefit from each other. Now, this type of biological association is referred to as a beneficial association. Referred to a beneficial association. Now, remember we said each organism or each organism in this association, they benefit from each other. Now, each organism is called a symbiont. It's called a symbiont. Each member or each organism in this association is called a symbiont. Now, let's take a look at some examples of symbiotic biological association. We have, I'm going to be exploring at least four different examples. The first one is called an association in lichen. Lichen is one of the association, <coughs> symbiosis association. Now, what is a lichen or what is a lichen actually? Now, lichen is a close association between a fungus and a green algae. A close association between a fungus and a green algae or alga. Now, how does this association work? Or how is this association carried out? Remember, both organisms are expected to benefit from each other, and it is a beneficial association. Now, in this association, the fungus encloses and protects the alga from physical damage and drying up. It encloses, it protects the alga from physical damage and also from drying up. And then also, the algae absorbs water. They, they, it also absorbs water which the algae or alga uses. That is, the, the, the fungus absorbs water which the alga uses. So you see that the alga is uh, benefiting um, protection uh, from physical damage and drying up, and also benefiting the use of water. Then how does the fungus benefit? The fungus then benefits in return from the alga by using part of the food manufactured by the green alga. Remember that a fungus is a non-green plant. But the alga, which is a green alga, can manufacture its own food through the process of what? Photosynthesis. So it means that the fungus benefits from the alga manufactured food while the alga benefits from the uh, fungus protection and then water supply. Okay, so this is another perfect example that explains symbiosis biological association. Another example that explains symbiosis biological association is the association between a flowering plant and an insect. A flowering plant and an insect. Now, the insects we're looking at here are not just ordinary insects, but pollinators, okay? The likes of butterfly, we have the bees, the honeybees, we have um, the aphids, we have the wasp, and so on. These are pollinators, okay? So, association between a flower or a flowering plant and an insect. Now, how does this association bring about the beneficing of both organisms or symbiosis. Now, the flowering plant produces or has a flower and the flower produces pollen and nectar. It produces pollen and nectar. And these pollen and nectar are being used as food by pollinators or mostly insect, insect pollinators like the bee, the, the, um, the, the butterfly. They feed from this pollen and also from this nectar. Then in return, 
in the process of feeding from this pollen and this nectar, these insects carry out what we call cross-pollination or self-pollination. Now, cross-pollination or self-pollination is a type of sexual reproduction. Okay, it's an aspect of sexual reproduction in plants. In fact, for sexual reproduction to take place, or what actually precedes um, um, fertilization by sexual reproduction in plants is what we call pollination. And what is pollination? It is simply the transfer of mature pollen grains from the anther of a flower to the stigma of another flower. In fact, Pollination brings about the fusion of the male and the female gametes in plants. All right. So in other words, what we are saying is that as the insect visits the flower, the insect is carrying out pollination. No wonder we call it agent of pollination. Agents of pollination are actually living organisms that bring about the process of pollination. So in this type of association, the flowering, flowering plants benefits uh, by pollination, benefits pollination, and then the insect benefits by feeding from the pollen and nectar that is being produced by flowering plants. Now another example of symbiosis is association between nitrogen fixing bacteria and leguminous plant. If you look up our video in nitro, uh, Nutrient Cycling 2, talking about nitrogen um, cycle, I made meant I talked about one of the process by which nitrogen can be added to the soil. And one of the processes through, by which nitrogen can be added to the soil, we said it is called nitrogen fixation. And I also said in that particular video that nitrogen fixation, we have two types. We have the symbiotic nitrogen fixation, and then we have the non-symbiotic nitrogen fixation. Now, symbiotic nitrogen fixation is the association, is type of an association that occurs between nitrogen fixing bacteria, which is called rhizobium leguminosarium, and then with the leguminous plant. Now, this is how the association comes about. Now, in this association, the bacteria rhizobium living is usually located in the root nodules of leguminous plants. Now, this bacteria rhizobium has the ability to fix nitrogen directly into the plant from the atmosphere. It can trap atmospheric nitrogen and then fix it directly into the plant so that the plants can make use of it make use of it for healthy growth, for development of what, the plant tissues and bodies. All right? Now, in return, what does the rhizobium benefit? What does the rhizobium gain from this type of association? The rhizobium actually obtains nutrients from the cells of the host plant, which is the leguminous plant, and it uses it to grow and also reproduce. It uses this for growth and also for reproduction. So you can see in this type of association, both organisms benefit from each other. Now, this is also another example of symbiotic um, association, okay? It is a beneficial type of association. Now, finally, on terms of symbiosis, is association between bacteria and ruminant animals. Ruminant animals. What are ruminant animals? Ruminant animals are actually animals that chew the cord. Okay, they have um, more. They have different types of um, um, stomach compartments. Uh, uh, like um, examples include we have the cow, the sheep, uh, we have the goats. These are referred to as ruminant animals. Now, in this type of association, the bacteria, bacteria and other protozoa are found to live or reside in the rumen of ruminant animals. Now, the rumen is one of um, the stomach, okay, 
of ruminant animals. Remember, I said that the ruminant animals, they have more than one stomach. They have about four stomach. The uh, uh, rumen is one of the stomach. We have the rectum, we have the abomasum, and we have the omasum, and then rumen. These are the stomach compartments, the four different stomach compartments of ruminant animals. So these bacteria and protozoa are found in the rumen of ruminant animals. And what do they actually do? They carry out digestion. They digest cellulose into sugars. They also synthesize amino acids and vitamins from other substances that are being eaten by these ruminant animals. Now, that's what they do. So in other words, it is the ruminant animals that are actually benefiting now, but how do they benefit? Now, in return, the ruminant animals provide food and also shelter for these bacteria and other protozoa. So you see, it is also a type of beneficial relationship, a type of beneficial relationship. Now, the second um, type of biological association we have also been, we've talked about symbiosis. Another type of biological association is commercialism. Commercialism. Now, this is a type of biological association between two organisms in which only one benefits while the other neither benefits nor is harmed in the process. One benefits the other does not benefit, neither is the other that doesn't benefit harmed in the process. Now, this type of relationship is a neutral relationship. It is a neutral relationship. Now, why is it referred to as a neutral relationship? Because no one is harmed in the process. No one is harmed in the process. One benefits, the other one doesn't benefit, but it is not what? Harm. So it is not a toxic relationship. Okay? Now, the one that actually benefits is usually called the commensal. The one that benefits is called the commensal. The one that does not benefit nor is harmed is called the host. The one that does not benefit nor is harmed is called the host. Now, this is what we call commercialism, all right? Now, let's take a look at some of the um, types of commercialism. We have some examples of commercialism. Let's explore a few of these examples. We have um, association between the shark and the remora fish. Now, that brings us to the, our introduction question I asked, the introductory question I asked, what type of relationship do you notice or can you say exists between the shark, which is a great uh, um, fierce predator, and the remora fish, a small um, fish, aquatic organism that is found in the ocean. Another example of commercialism is the association between man and intestinal bacteria. In the man, there are bacteria that are found inside of our intestine, but they are not Hamful. Also, we have an association between the oyster and then we have the crab. And then also we have association between what we call epiphytes and flowering plants. Now let's take a look at the first one, which is the association between shark and the remora fish. Now you can see the structure of the shark and you can see the structure of the remora fish. The remora fish is closely related in fact, not closely, closely attached, closely attached to this fierce predator. Now, the shark, like we said, at the sight of a shark, most aquatic organisms take to their heels. Even um, terrestrial organisms that are in water run away from the shark. It is a fierce predator. But the remora fish is not as massive as the shark is, not also threatening as the shark is. However, there is an unusual association between these two organisms or these two aquatic organisms. Now, what happens? How is, <coughs> which one is actually benefiting? Of course, you will say it is the shark that is benefiting while the uh, um, remora fish is not harmed. Maybe the shark just overlooks the remora fish and doesn't want to harm the remora fish. But 
uh, 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 that's actually the reverse of it. Now, in this type of association, it is actually the remora fish that is benefiting while the shark is not benefiting anything, neither is the shark harmed in the process. Now, the remora fish attaches itself to the body of the shark and follows it about wherever it goes. Now, the remora fish in this process feeds on the particles left over by the shark. Not only that it feeds from the leftovers from the shark, it also gains protection. It gains protection. Imagine the remora fish moving with the shark and you, or probably we have another aquatic organism that wants to feed on the remora fish. It is actually impossible. So impossible. Very, very impossible. So fishes cannot come close to the remora fish all because of the presence of the shark. Now imagine yourself, a little boy close to a, let me say Goliath, a, a, a giant, a, a wrestler, someone that with several muscles and all that. And the little boy is actually looking for your own trouble. And the, 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 the giant or the wrestler is close in association with this boy. And the boy is always with this man. You dare not touch the boy. You dare not come close or else it will be another story altogether. The same way the remora fish is actually getting protection, getting and enjoying protection and shelter from the shark. Now, what does the shark benefit from the remora fish? Absolutely nothing. Is the shark harmed in the process? No, the shark is not harmed in the process. So in this type of association, the shark is the host while the remora fish is actually the commercial. This is an example of a neutral association a neutral association. Another example of um, commercialism is located in the association between a man and intestinal bacteria. Man and intestinal bacteria. Now, of course, we already know this. Bacteria, bacteria, bacteria. People hearing about bacteria, the first thing that runs through their mind is disease causing disease causing organism disease causing organism now there are some disease cause or there are some bacteria if i may say that are friendly now we can call those bacteria that are friendly normal flora they don't harm you and some of them are located in your intestinal walls now what do they do to man is it actually man that benefits or the bacteria that benefits. Now, in this type of association, the bacteria, bacteria, there are some bacteria that live in the large intestine of man and they feed on undigested food substances. In some books, they will say they are found in the cacum. The cacum is closely related with the large intestine if you're looking at the alimentary canal of man. Okay, and in that place you have some undigested food like cellulose and so on are found there. Now, these bacteria, which can be called the normal flora, they help to digest most, they break down, they break down most of these um, food materials, undigested food materials or cellulose. Thus, they obtain food from it. They obtain their food from it. So they are feeding from those undigested food or cellulose. They are also getting shelter. They are also getting protection from the man. So they are benefiting from the man. But in return, the man neither suffers harm. These type of bacteria don't cause diseases. So the man neither suffers harm, nor the man does the man benefit from this type of association. The man is not benefiting anything from the bacteria. The man is also not suffering any harm from the bacteria. So this is also another example of commercialism. Also another example of commercialism is the association between oyster and crab. 
If you check the screen, you're going to see a little crab found inside of the oyster. Now, it's also another weird association that is actually found. You know, the crab with the appendages that they have that is like claws or something, and um, they're using grabbing prey and all that, very painful if you get stung by it. And um, imagine it staying inside of the shell of the oyster and no harm is being done because this is also a type of or an example of commercialism of which one benefits and the other one doesn't benefit but is not harmed in the process so if we're looking at this in this type of association the crab leaves and obtains shelter as well as protection in the shell of the oyster however the crab inside the shell of the oyster does not benefit the oyster. So the oyster doesn't benefit anything from the crab, nor does the crab harm the oyster in this type of association. So the oyster is regarded as the host, while the crab is regarded as the commercial. Is regarded as the commercial. And then finally, we have association. Another example is association between epiphytes and flowering plants. Epiphytes and flowering plants. Now, what are epiphytes? Epiphytes are actually plants that grow on, they grow on or are supported by another plant. You find them growing on another plant. Okay? Now, epiphytes do not take manufactured food from their supported plant. They provide for their own food because they are photosynthetic. So they can manufacture their own food. They don't. They don't take manufactured food from their supported plants. They can manufacture their own food. All they need is the support. All they need is that shelter they can get from other plants. So in this type of association, the epiphyte grows on other flowering plants and obtains shelter and support. However, in this association, the flowering plant does not benefit, nor is the flowering plant harmed in the process. So this is also another example of commercialism. The epiphyte is now seen as the commercial, while the flowering plant is seen as the host. Now this brings us to the end of this particular topic on biological association one. But before we go, let's take a look at some few questions using the exam guide app based on biological association. Now take a look at this question one. An association between the root noodles of leguminous plant and rhizobium, I have mentioned this, is known as A, is it parasitism? B, is it symbiosis? C, is it commercialism? Z, uh, D, is it mycorrhiza? Mycorrhiza. Now, we're not talking about, we didn't mention anything that has to do with mycorrhiza as, as it regards to, um, as it regards to um, biological association, types of biological association. Now, the association between leguminous plants and the rhizobium is a beneficial type of um, 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 association of which the leguminous plant benefits shelter as well as food and also the leguminous plant benefits the fixing of nitrogen into its plant. So it is a type of symbiosis, a type of symbiosis, B. Um, the type of nutrition in which, okay, this has to do with nutrition. Um, this one is parasitism, probably next class, um, okay. Now look at this question. What type of relationship is between protozoa and termites? Protozoa and termites. Is it symbiosis? Is it epiphytism? Is it saprophytism? Or is it parasitism? The correct answer is symbiosis. They both benefit mutually from each other. And then let's take this as the last question for today. They said the association between two organisms living together in which 
only one benefits from the association, while the other is neither benefited nor harmed? The correct answer is commercialism. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using your exam guide app. The app scores and gives a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. You can also learn particular topics of interest with different modes like study mode, uh, mock mode, and even practice mode. It, is also, it also has other features that makes learning very fun. Now, it is a must for all serious students. Download from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channels, hit the notifica notification bell, and share the videos to your loved ones and friends that will benefit from it. Bye for now.